All right, this is another video about um, dividend investing. Uh, this time I wanted to pick uh, high yielding um, monthly paying dividend stocks. So I know the, the um, price will change probably before the end of next month, and there's a good chance the dividend yield would change. Um, and especially with these monthly dividends, it's a lot of real estate investment trust um, master limited partnerships and um, uh, business, I think it's discretionary company. I believe that's what that is, BDC, something like that. So basically it's um, those three sectors or um, companies, usually holding companies, stuff like that. Um, I did put uh, two ETFs on here. Um, and so, and the, this last stock is basically uh, a stock that pays an extremely high dividend of 35%. And I'll kind of go over why it's paying that and um, whether it's worth risking um, riding out the whole three months to see if, um, if uh, that stock maintains that price and that kind of thing. So I just threw it in there as a little bonus. Um, so, and then I broke down what it would be per month to compare it to the, the other monthly dividend paying stocks. So to start out with, um, the first little row is going to be the stock, uh, stock ticker right there. And then the current price as of, let's see, today is, I think it's December 1st. So I believe that's today's date. So very beginning of December, that's the uh, price and the annual dividend percentage. Of course, you can't really look at this annually. You can figure out next month's um, dividend probably if it stays uh, close to the same. Now, two or three months from now, both of these numbers will be different more than likely because uh, there's always a reason they're paying a high dividend. It's because either stock price is going down or for whatever reason, it's just you know, the, the dividend would change. Um, and then some of these, if they're high risk, they could just cut the dividend altogether. Um, this company SBR, uh, that's I believe a utilities or energy company, if I can remember right, a little trust that uh, manages that. Anyway, um, sometimes their monthly payout is, basically what they do is they pay 100% of the cash, not the cash, but 100% um, of the profit, uh, net profit or whatever, to the shareholders. And so that could be five cents, or that could be up to like two dollars and ninety cents. It, it varies, um, but just based on this price and that percentage, that would be the annual dividend payout. But so going back to the little rows here, um, and so this would be uh, the annual dividend amount. So that's what you get for the whole twelve months. And in order to factor in, I mean. In order to uh, calculate uh, what what that would be, you divide that number by twelve, and then that would give you the the amount of money every month that you would get. Um, so this uh, one sixty two is going to be uh, pretty much just round it twenty percent of that would give you that for the annual, and then you divide that number by twelve, and then that gives you the, the uh, monthly dividend. So if it's 162 divided by 12, you're looking at probably maybe 10 to 11 cents per month based on one share at that price and at that dividend. And so, uh, you know, just doing it by, for one share doesn't really tell you much, but I, I did two little scenarios. So I uh, factored in if I spent $100 on each one of these stocks, and if I uh, spent a thousand dollars on each one of these stocks, and so uh, put the number of shares and then a slash, and then um, the monthly profit from the dividend. So this isn't isn't considering the amount of money that the stock price increased. It's only considering the dividend. And to get the number of shares, I actually rounded down. So. Um, if you spend $100 on this OXLC, you're going to get over 12. I think it's like 12.8 or something like that. But just round it down, it would be 12 shares. And so, uh, based on 
the annual dividend amount, if you had 12 shares, um, so spending $100 on it, you would make a profit for next month of $1.62, as long as the price stays about the same and the dividend stays about the same. Now, if you'd spent $1,000 on it, um, you'd have 120 shares and $16.20 for next month. And so this will kind of give you a little idea on the stock um, and then the, the payout and that kind of thing. So some of these stocks are more expensive, um, but they may be more stable too. So say that O is, um, I think I call it Realty Investment. I think it's Realty Realty Income is the name of the, the company. Um, anyway, it's high. It's like $76. It pays 3.55%. Um, and then so the annual would be 272 that they're paying to you every year. Divide that by 12. Uh, basically with $100, you'd have one share. And so that would give you 23 cents. And then if you had spent $1,000 on it, you'd have 10 shares. You'd have more, of course, you know, because $1,000 would buy more than 10 at the, the price of 76. But you'd have probably about 12, realistically. But just to round it, I said 10 shares. Um, and that gave you $2.30. Um, and so just based on this, you would think, well, let me look at what's going to be the cheapest stock for me to buy into or what would give me the, give me the um, uh, basically the highest number of shares or give me the highest dividend percentage, I mean, dividend payout amount. But that's not really always the case that, that why you would want to buy something. Um, and, and you got to think too, you know, just because something's paying a crazy high dividend doesn't mean that stock price is stable. And it doesn't always mean the dividend is stable. Sometimes the dividend could go to 2% and then go to 19% and then drop back down to 2%. You never know. So it's kind of unpredictable sometimes. Um, some companies are more stable than others. Um, the real realty uh, income trust, now it's actually gone up in price. I believe it was like 66 a share year to date and now it's um, $76. And the dividend usually increases. It doesn't really go down. So that's pretty stable. And so that's why even though it's not paying an extremely high dividend, it does pay every month. So if for some reason that stock price just plummeted, if it went from 76 and it just was on a downhill and started going to like $50, you could sell out you know, at the end of that month and you'd still collect that dividend and you wouldn't lose as much compared to holding it for a quarter or semi-annual or uh, some companies even pay an annual dividend. So you wouldn't have to hold it that long time in order to collect a dividend. Um, let's see. And this, this last little stock here, the BPT, right? Um, so that's a little trust. Um, so I did it just to throw it in here because it paid an extremely high percentage. It pays um 35.23% annual dividend. And it's a cheap stock to buy. So for based on this, uh, the stock times the um, annual percentage gives you an annual payout of $2.23. And that's 223 per $6.34 that you spent. So that's, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money coming back to you. Um, so say you spent a hundred dollars on it, you would get 15 shares and it would pay the annual amount would be $33. Now, if you broke it, it pays a quarterly dividend though. It pays out every quarter. And so that would be $8 payout every quarter for a hundred dollars invested. And if you broke that $8 down and, um, so if you said the annual amount divided by 12, that would give you 279. And so at the, uh, let's see, for a thousand shares, you would have $27, basically, almost $28 for putting a thousand dollars into it. Um, and so just based on that, and, and on paper, it looks good. But when you look at the stock chart in a minute, I'll show you, um, it doesn't look good at all, but 
just based on this, the high percentage, it looks good. But you're losing more on the overall stock price than you'll make. Um, and so I'll kind of go to that now. I made a, a little, not really a chart, but I just kind of jotted down the patterns of the way these monthly ET, um, monthly stocks look. Uh, and so you can see the low to high. So that's the lowest price year to date, the highest price year to date, and then the current price. So a lot of these, eh, they're kind of in the middle of where they were. Um, most of them kind of peak in the summer and then they go back. So this is winter to winter. And so uh, 11 is about the mid-range. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. What was I going to Oh, here's the O. So realty income, um, it's actually gone up in price. So if you had bought it last winter and just held it, you know, you'd make money. Um, so uh, um, I was wrong. The year to date is actually 59. So that would be right here at the very lowest that it was. And so now it's six, I mean, $76. So you would have 76 minus, if you were to sell it today, 76 minus 59. Um, let's see, what would that be? My brain's not really thinking <laughs> right now. But you'd have the difference in these two for the stock um, appreciation, the stock price growth, as well as you would have $2.72 for that one share. So that's not bad, you know, if you look at it in that regard. Um, uh, this SRET, uh, with them, what, the, what, what I like about this stock is that they're not really concerned with the stock appreciation as, as much as they are just maintaining the stock. So I think the low was at thir 13, so it actually went up about a dollar, uh, 15 on here, I think. I think it was around thirteen fifty. I just rounded the number, but so you basically made about two dollars on SRET if you had held it the whole year, as far as the stock appreciation, and then you would have that dividend which paid a dollar thirty two for the year, and that's just for one share. So, um, say you'd bought, uh, let's see, say we spent a hundred dollars on it, right, and you got six shares, okay. So, based on this, um, six, and then we're going to say this for a year. You'd make uh, six times two for the stock growth, that'd be 12. And then six times, just around six times six. Uh, so, you would make $18 total off of having $100 invested into it. And that's off of the stock growth and the dividend payouts. So, it's not bad, $18. I mean, that's... It's almost um, basically the cost of a share. I mean, it's over the cost of a share. So if you were to reinvest it, you'd have an extra share, you know, that time. Uh, let's see. And these two I really liked um, as far as uh, the growth. So they both had really great growth. Um, so gain went from 8 to 14. And um, let's see. Main went to 31 to 44. And you can see they're at the top of the gain right here. I mean, top of the um, highs for the chart. Um, and then you go back to look at the amount of percentage. They both pay about the same dividend percentage as of December, you know, the beginning of December. Um, one costs more than the other. So, of course, the dividend is going to be more than this one. So it's all how much you want to invest into it. Um, so let's see which one would be the better deal out of man, main and gain, okay? Uh, let's see, so main, I'm going to factor in and see how much it pays. So out of, say you invested $100, and so that would be 2, okay, and it's 43. So for, so for the dividend, for the whole year, you'd have, say, 250, you know, round it up. So that would be $5 on the dividend. And then Maine had an increase. Let's see. And let's say you sold it at the current price. So that'd be 21. So you'd make $26 off of that $100 investment for the year on Maine. Um, and so for gain, you would have, let's see, you would have six shares. 
And let's see, I'm gonna round that, let's say 80. Six times eight is 48. So I'm gonna round up to $5 as well. So it pays about the same. Even though um, this costs more than that, uh, you get a higher uh, uh, dividend annual payout. You still make about $5 on both of these. So, and that's on the dividend. And let's see, we'll come down here to gain. Let's see how much you would have made. So 14 minus eight. So that's going to be six. And then you would have six shares. So that's 36 plus the five. So 36. So 41. Okay. So with main, you would have made $27 profit. And with gain, you would have made, what was that, 40, what did I say a while ago, 47, I think. So, um, definitely, or to 41, I believe, I think that's what it was. So, basically, uh, almost $30 will main, and then you would have made about $40 would gain. And that's off of the investing $100 into both, I mean, either one. And then, that's based on the dividend payout for the year, and then the stock appreciation for the year. Okay, and so this extremely high dividend <laughs> is 35%, okay? And it's going to be for the quarter. All right, that's, that's what it pays every quarter, so every three months. Um, so the low is down here where it is now. So it got down to $5. Right now it's about $6.34. Uh, the high is way up here at $20. No, 28, I mean $28. So that's when it, the beginning of the year. And so it's just been going down, steadily down. And that's the reason it's paying that high percentage is because, uh, for two reasons. When you pay out, or no, 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 not for two reasons. Um, For one reason, it's trying to get <laughs> investors to not sell every share of it, and they're enticing them with that high dividend. But you end up losing more than you're making. So... On the dividend for the year, you would make two dollars twenty-three cents off of one share. Um, let's see, and but you're losing. So, but this is January and dropped down to a dollar. Uh, when it got to May, July, that's when you saw this big dip here. It got down to fifteen. Um, let's see, August. So this is going. Right, this line right here is where August is. And so it went from $9, uh, dropped down to 8 in October, which is right here. And then December dropped down to 6, and that's where we are now. So, even though that's paying, um, uh, if you broke it down into the month, you're making $2.79 on the dividend as long as that stays about the same price and the yield stays about the uh, same yield. But you're losing so much. So in the course of a month, basically you would have lost $2. Um, so really, you're only making $0.79 cents profit for that share uh, because you're losing $2 on the stock um, decline. You know, And so that, that's just something to think about. Um, uh, me personally, uh, it, it depends. Like, um, there's no guarantee main gain. Um, let's see, another stock, realty. Uh, some of the, there's no guarantee that they're going to steadily go up. At some point, I feel like they'll plateau. But if they do plateau, I'm sure the dividend will go up. So maybe it's a buy, maybe it's not, you know. But it's just something to consider. Um, when you, if, if you were needing to cash it out at the end of the month, then, yeah, the monthly dividend paying stock is an option. Um, especially like realty investment group, uh, realty income, the stock ticker O. Uh, they, they, the price usually steadily is going up, and the dividend usually is going, it's increasing as well. But it's just, it just doesn't pay a lot, you know. So uh, the dividend, you know, 3.55%. Uh, for the whole year, you're making $2.72. So there's nothing to really get excited about. <laughs> Not to me, at least. Um, 
And so then that's why I'd be kind of holding off on investing in, in that. Um, and it could be different if I had, you know, a million dollars to put into it. I feel like O would be safe and, and I'd make money on the appreciation and the stock. But if you're investing you know, smaller amounts, you may not, it may not appeal to you. Like it doesn't really appeal to me. Um, but something like gain would, I like gain. I, th I think that's a, that's a good pick for a monthly dividend. Um, and so it's only 82 cents. Um, there's no guarantee that yield's going to stay about the same. There's no guarantee the price is going to steadily increase. But if you looked at it a month-to-month -month basis, um, and so if it's around 14, you look at it next month, it's around you know maybe 14 or 15. It's it seems like that pattern you know seems like the pattern would steadily be going up. So it could be stable. So. Anyway, this is just a little um, kind of sample video of monthly dividend stocks, um, kind of what the charts look like. And so you just have to use your own judgment whether you think that stock chart is going to stay where it is. It could do like this where it spiked at like $53 and then dropped all the way back down to 46 But, I mean, you just have to weigh it out, you know whether you want to invest into it or not.